Given the function g of x equals 5 minus x squared, evaluate g of x plus h minus g of x all divided by h, where h cannot equal 0. Well, that should make sense, right? I mean, just in terms of the x not equal, excuse me, h not equaling 0, we couldn't have a 0 in the denominator. But now, in terms of trying to evaluate this thing, I'm sure it looks a little complex. So let's break it down, okay? So the first thing is they gave us a particular function. They said this thing on the right-hand side is equal to the function g of x, okay? So at a minimum, when I look at this function, when I look at this overall function they want us to evaluate, I notice that this is the same, right? These two, this g of x and then this g of x are the same thing. So basically, right, just thinking logically about this, if this is equal to this and this is the same thing as this, then I can just take this value and plug it on in for g of x, right? So that should be, that should hopefully make sense here, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite g of x plus h. Let me write this a little neater. So this is g of x plus h minus g of x all over h, okay? Now, instead of writing this, I'm going to substitute in what we just talked about, 5 minus x squared. So let me just rewrite g plus h minus now 5 minus x squared. Okay, and I have to put this in parentheses because it says I'm going to subtract the entire function. So I need to subtract the entire function. And that's all over h, okay? So all over h. Now what I need to do is try to figure out well, what do I need to do with this piece? So let me ask you a question. Pretend we have, so pretend, not pretend, I mean we have g of x is equal to 5 minus x squared. Pretend I asked you to evaluate this function or this statement at g of a. What would you do? Well, you'd say, oh, right, all I got to do is just anywhere I see x on the right-hand side, plug in my a value, right? So this would be 5 minus a squared. Right, if I told you evaluate it at g of 5, or let me choose a different number, g of 6, you'd say, oh great, anywhere on the right-hand side over here where I see x, I'd plug in a 6, and I would solve, right, whatever this works out to be. Now, all I'm going to ask you is how do you evaluate now g of x plus h? And you follow the same process. I think some students get confused because there is an x in here already, and they're thinking, well, here's an x too, what do I do? No, no, no. Focus that this whole thing is just what we are substituting for our x. I don't care that this also has an x in it. This is the thing that I will be plugging in for my x value. Okay, so this thing will be equivalent to 5 minus x plus h squared. All right, let me write that a little neater. x plus h squared. So hopefully... You, can, you see the pattern here, and this is really what I need to plug into g of x plus h, okay? So now instead of writing g of x plus h, what I'm going to do is I'll just erase it now, all right, keep it all on the same line, is I'm now going to write what I found it to be, this thing. So it's 5 minus x plus h squared, okay? Now, this is all I can do, right? I substituted both functional values in the numerator, and I can't do anything really with h in the, in the denominator, so now all I'm going to do is try to simplify this, all right? So if you notice the steps, I plugged in the indicated values of f of x, then I substituted those x values, and now I'm going to simplify, all right? So now just simplify these things. So if we have, remember, doing some of the, whenever you have x plus h squared, this is like saying a plus b right, squared. Anytime you have two values added together and you're squaring the, the summation of these two values, you can rewrite this as a multiplication of two binomials because that's basically what it is, right? It's saying you're going to square this result. So take this and multiply it by itself, which is exactly what we have over here. And now when you do that, and I'm going to give myself a little more space here, okay? Now when we do that, all we have to do is do our FOIL method, right? So x times x, which would be x squared, x times h, which is xh, 
h times x, which is hx, but I'm going to leave it xh just so that you see the commonality there. And then we would have lastly h times h, which is just h squared. And then I can combine my like terms here, right? So this is just x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. There's a pattern here, okay? Anytime you have a value that looks like this, a plus b squared, it can always be rewritten as a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. All right, so that's basically what we're saying. All right, all of these things are equal to one another. So now I'm going to substitute on into my equation here this mumbo jumbo. So this is going to be 5 minus x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus then. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to distribute uh, these terms, okay? Uh, meaning the, the negative. So it's going to be minus 5 plus a positive x squared. Actually, you know what? I'll do that in the next step. Let me, let me just rewrite exactly how we see it, okay? Because what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do it for the whole thing. So this is all over h. Now what I'm going to do is I realize that I have two negatives in front of these parentheses. So I'm going to distribute the negatives for each. Okay, that's going to be the next step algebraically. So I'll just write a little arrow. Actually, what I'll do is we'll go up here. Okay, so this is now going to be 5 minus x squared minus 2xh minus h squared minus 5 and plus x squared. Okay, all over h. Now all I have to do is remember combine my like terms. So I notice that this 5, that's positive, and this is a negative, so I can cancel those, right? And I also notice that this is a negative x squared, and this is a positive x squared, so I can also cancel those. Okay, so what I'm left with now is I am left with um, negative 2xh minus h squared all over h. And now you might be saying, well, wait a minute, I, I got a common H here. Can I do anything with that? And yes, we actually can, right? So this is just further algebra now. So all we now need to look at, I'll just move this over a little bit. All we now need to do is factor out, and I'm going to factor actually out a common negative H, all right, just to make everything positive on the, in the numerator. So this is going to be negative H multiplied by whatever is left, the 2X, right? 2X, because if you took negative H, multiply it by positive 2x, you would get negative 2xh. Similarly, on the last term, it's then going to be a uh, positive value because I'm factoring out that negative and just a positive h because negative h times positive h is a negative h squared, right? So that should hopefully make sense. And now this is just divided by h. And now the beauty of doing that is the following, that you now have since you have h by itself, you can divide the h's on out, okay? So they will cancel. And now what you are left with from this whole craziness will be negative 2x plus h. Do not forget those parentheses, okay? Otherwise, it will be incorrect. And that would be your answer. So as you can see, it's a hard substitution. The algebra is a little challenging, but hopefully it should all make sense. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. Also, tell your friends. That would be great. We would love to help them too. And uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.